Hello, everybody. I'm Larry Ridley, and this is the NFL on EA Sports. Today's matchup features a couple of big targets who will be looking to get open in the middle of the field. It's the Jaguars going up against the Steelers. With that, let's welcome in our fine broadcast team. Here are Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. Right at the convergence of the three rivers on Art Rooney Drive, we welcome you to Heinz Field in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. A few moments ago, the Steeler offensive starters, including all pro wideout Antonio Brown, were introduced. And they've got this crowd in a frenzy as they get set to square off with the Jacksonville Jaguars. And welcome again, everybody, alongside Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gunn. And, and Larry, he took a moment to highlight the tight ends that we're going to see in this one. I know in our production meeting, we were talking about what we wanted to highlight pregame. And you said tight ends. Why did you say that? Because it can be such a matchup issue for defenses nowadays. Because these tight ends, they're oversized guys, but they can run as well. So who are you going to cover them with? If you use a traditional linebacker, they're usually going to run past those guys. If you're going to use a smaller corner, maybe they'll be too big. Can a safety match up and run with them and also use enough bulk to keep them from just having their way? So, so many ways that tight ends are used nowadays, they're fun to watch. And the decision to bring it out is going to cost him about seven yards, all told, as he's taken down back shy of the 20. Here comes Pittsburgh, their offense taken to field. You get a look at Ben Roethlisberger. And that Week 15 game, that crazy ending, what a game it was with New England. But that, that might be one that ultimately decides their fate this season down the stretch. Yeah, you're certainly right about that because New England winning that game moved them into the driver's seat for the number one seed for the playoffs. So if that turns out to be the game that separates, oh, yeah, because... You know, beating New England on their home field is always a challenge for anyone in the league. If you want your best shot to get into the Super Bowl, you want home field throughout. And two crazy plays to end that game. The Jesse James touchdown, not a touchdown, and then the interception. Yeah, on the fake spike yeah. play where Antonio Brown unable to play because of injury. They tried to throw the ball inside to Eli Rogers. And how well coached was New England? Well prepared for the play. Made a play on the ball, popped it up in the air. Interception ended the game. I do believe we'll see a little bit more of this as this game progresses because when you can have that type of a game in the middle of the defense, it hurts them in so many ways because most teams like to be strong down the middle. And if you can sting them there, that opens things up for you on the outside as well. But that's where he, their big tight end, is so good. That middle third, the seam routes, the in routes. Yeah, you're right. Probably see more of that. Yeah, it takes a lot of courage and fortitude to go in the middle as well. <laughs> and he's got it. Now a play fake here on first down. Oh, that was dangerous. Threw it into coverage, almost picked. But instead, they'll keep it on second down. And a peek now at the offense for Pittsburgh. Jesse James is a tight end who's a combo player. Could line up on the line of scrimmage, block at the point of attack, and also get out in front of wide receivers when they're running screens. But he also catches the ball well. Short, intermediate routes are his best. But when he grabs it, he's also tough to tackle in the secondary. Second down following the incompletion. Now the first carry for Le'Veon Bell. Bell so light on his feet. Le'Veon Bell, it's a foot race. The 20. And into the end zone. Touchdown, Pittsburgh. Le'Veon Bell, 66 yards. And the Steelers have taken a first quarter lead. You talk about explosion plays. There's one pretty much right out of the gate. And now they get to ride a wave of emotion, momentum, everything. Just as you just as you described, right out of the gate. Big sprint, touchdown. They're excited. But on the other side, they've got a guard against a major letdown because they hit him right in the gut with that one. And now you start to question yourself a little bit when you give up the touchdown on the opening drive. And he'll put it through to make it 7-0 Steelers. The drive there only spanning three plays. And it ends with a Le'Veon Bell touchdown run.
Boswell on now to kick this one away. To return it is Corey Grant. Able to slither by. And good starting field position. He'll get this one all the way up to about the 35-yard line. Offensively, here come the Jacksonville Jaguars and Blake Bortles. What a season for these guys. They're going to return to the playoffs for the first time in a decade. Double-digit wins, and that's after, what, the past six years, you had the stat. What were they the past six years? Yeah, we had to get Marvin to look this one up for us. 22 and 74 in the past six seasons. And look, I'm old enough to remember when they were a perennial, not just playoff threat, but very good in the playoffs. Went to two AFC championship games. So for them to be back in the playoffs for the first time in a decade, all is well in Jacksonville. Bortles now on first down. Looking and finding Allen Hearns. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. A big one there for the Jags. 18 yards, first down. Defense gives up a touchdown in the opening drive. Offense, you got to want to get out there and get those points back right now. And that's a sharp throw there to get this drive off to a good start. This is Leonard Fournette as he's got this down inside the 40 to the 39. Eight yards on the pickup, and now they'll have some options on second and short. And Leonard Fournette impressing there with that run. It's hard to believe that no Jacksonville Jaguar has broken 1,000 yards since Maurice Jones drew in 2011. I think Leonard Fournette could be that guy. Even with the ankle injury last year at LSU, still averaged six and a half yards per carry. And absolutely intimidated opposing defenses. A lot of guys simply didn't want to tackle him. Now Bortles throwing on second down. It's a loss of two, now third down. The Steelers insert their nickel defense on third down. Yeah, they add a DB. <laughs> Throwing now is Bortles. They set up the screen to Ivory. And he's going to get to the 31, enough for the first down. They get nine out of that one, and as a result, the drive continues. I like the screen being called here early in the game, especially on the opening drive, because Brandon... When guys come out of the locker room, especially those pass rushers, they are so amped up to get to the quarterback that you can use that against them, and a screen pass is a great way of doing it. A lot of teams against good pass rushing teams, they want to run the screen 10 to 12 times in a game. three as he's brought down to the 28. And the box that's highlighted is for Hearns on this offense. Do you have your track shoes available? Because Alan Hearns is a guy that gets you on your horse if you're trying to defend him. He can take anyone deep and win on any route. Here we go with second and seven. This one complete to his fullback out of the backfield. And he'll be brought down inside the 20 at the 19. Nine yards on the pickup there, and it keeps the drive alive. 
This drive, it's been a good mix. Three passing plays, three runs, hitting on all three of those passes, and the last one putting him in the red zone. So wouldn't you think play action right here? Because you've got the ability and had the ability to run it and throw it. Go play action and take your shot at the end zone. So they're operating in the red zone. Into the red zone, it's Bortles. He couldn't quite hold it, got hit. Ball pops out, incomplete. And the starting defensive unit here for Pittsburgh. In today's NFL, you're not just looking for height from your cornerbacks, you're looking for length in order to combat the tall wide receivers that they have to play against each and every week. And Artie Burns has all of that. In addition, he has the ability to change direction and make plays on the football in the air. And finally, He's a willing tackler, which is really key for cornerbacks today. Offense walks to the line for play number seven of the drive. Portals trying the option to the right. And he'll get this down only to the 18. Only a yard there on the keeper, and that's going to leave him with a third down. Typically on the read option play, when we talk about responsibilities, we're talking about what the quarterback has to go through. How about the inside linebacker, though? His job on this play, shadow the quarterback and hold him to a short gain. Did it to perfection. Throwing his Bortles on third down. And this is going to be incomplete. So on fourth down, Doug Marone going to send out his field goal unit. From the right hash, it's a 35-yard attempt. And Lambeau will put this one through. And they are on the board, but still trailing. It's 7-3. to three. So in the end, they had the ball for 10 plays, but the drive only yields three points. Yeah, they were able to move the football, but the defense stiffened once their backs were to the end zone, and they were able to hold them to just three. Now after the made field goal, back out Lambeau to kick this one off. This is taken about seven yards deep. And no thought to bring this one out. He'll just go down to a knee, and he'll take over at the 25. The Steelers' offense now, they head back onto the field. They had the touchdown on the opening drive of the ball game. It was countered by just a field goal. So, hey, if you guys can do that for four quarters, you're in good shape. Yeah, it is a team game, so that's just good complimentary football. But, you know, I know I'm no brainiac, but you trade sixes for threes, things are going to work out in your favor. start the drive with a carry by Bell. And he's able to plow forward up to about the 29, just shy of the 30. Call it a gain of four on first, and that'll make it second down. And time to take a look at the Jaguar defense. Malik Jackson won a Super Bowl in Denver before moving to Jacksonville as a big-time free agent. And he justified that signing, too. Six and a half sacks, a career high in 2016. I love what he did off the field, partner. Do you see this little note we've got on him? 181 pet adoptions made possible by Malik Jackson paying the fees in the offseason. Strong fella, soft heart. See if they stay on the ground for second down. Again, it's Bell. And he'll lose yardage here, going down back at the 28. He'll wind up losing a yard on the play, and that'll bring up a third down. 
Every year I go to the combine and marvel at the speeds that linebackers are running nowadays. They run like DBs. And let's face it, they know how to finish plays too. Eyes up, head up, run right through them. And the Jags have five in the secondary here on third down. Out of the gun, it's Roethlisberger. And it falls incomplete after almost being intercepted. A pick there would have been great. The good news for the defense now, it's fourth down. So possession one ended in six. Possession two likely going to end in a punt. Yeah, that's okay. They've just got to get back to what they worked on in the opening drive and continue to make a few adjustments along the way. It won't be exact because the defense will make a few adjustments themselves. Just get back to your game plan. On fourth down, here comes the Steeler punter Jordan Berry to kick it away. Big kick that time, 52 yards. And the Jaguars go on offense, first down and 10. Out comes the Jacksonville offense as they get set to take over here. And last time, able to get three. It's not what they wanted. They wanted six, but they got at least something. They mustered something out of the drive. They'll take it. Just I, I like the way you've described it. Not ideal, but they'll take it. Anything to put some points on the board. But this time on offense, they don't even want to see the field goal kicker trot on the field. <laughs> they want that ball in the end zone. Yeah, they'll be going for six. A fake to Fournette. Now it's Bortles to throw. Trying to lay one up deep. So they took a shot on first down, but couldn't connect. What I loved about meeting with these coaches before the game is we didn't even have to ask any questions. They told us that they were going to be aggressive and push the ball downfield. They weren't successful on that play, but look for them to try it again later. So the incomplete pass brings up second down. Bortles on the give to Fournette. Just a couple there on the second down run. Now they're staring at a third and eight situation. Well, that's a good start to this drive on the defensive side of the ball. 4C and completion on first down. Then you're able to shut down the running play on second. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised now. A little bit of pressure going at the quarterback in the expected passing situation. From the gun on third down, Bortles looking long for Westbrook. And a shot taken on third down, unsuccessful. Fourth down now. And you just know when that play call came in, their eyes lit up because anytime you get a chance to take a big shot downfield, that's a lot of fun, and they missed an opportunity. So on fourth down, here's Brad Nortman on to punt it away. Back deep for the Steelers, Antonio Brown. Now Brown. We'll call that a punt of 54 yards. Well struck. And the Steelers will go on offense here. First and 10. The Steelers offense now. They get ready to head back on the field. They've got the lead. Last time had to punt it, though. What's the key to this drive? I think it's leverage. Ah, the leverage. big guys up front. You know the motivational speech on the sideline is, guys, give us an opportunity. Protect the passer create space for our runners and let's go ahead and get these guys low man wins let's go do it on this drive <laughs> we'll watch that leverage on this drive they'll start out on the ground with bell and he's going to get about seven yards on that one up to around the 33 Getting the sense, Charles, are going to put a big emphasis this afternoon on the run game. And why not? What we're seeing so far is working pretty well from them. And here's the best part. We always talk about the best performers do their job when the lights come on. I think he likes natural light best.
So second down, three yards to go now. They'll go again with Bell, and he'll be limited to a short gain up to about the 34-yard line. They got two of the three they needed there. It leaves them with third and just a yard. If they're going to get a first down out of this, they're going to have to earn it because there's been tough going in the interior there. And here we are on third and one. Be prepared. Brace yourself. Could be some contact going on. They'll try and run for it with Bell. And he's taken down at the 43, but not before picking up the first. It's a nine-yard gain, and it keeps the drive moving. They're making a real first-quarter statement with a run game, no doubt. For those who remember old-school football, running it, establishing things, seeing backs find holes, get through them, they've got to like what they're seeing from this unit so far. Right now, they've decided to, as you've said, establish the run game, and they've been successful doing it. Now Roethlisberger on first down. His throw incomplete. Antonio Brown, the intended receiver. And that'll bring up second down. So they're still at the original line of scrimmage here. Second down and 10. From the shotgun, it's Roethlisberger. A dump off to Toussaint. And he's able to get this one out closer to midfield across the 45. It'll be a three-yard gain. And all of a sudden here, it's third down. Third down now following the completed pass. From the gun, it's Roethlisberger. He completes it to Bryant. And he's able to get the first before he's taken down at the 36. They call it a gain at 19, and it moves the chains. Roethlisberger on first down. And he's caught right at the 10-yard line. A good pick up there, 26 yards. You know, when I see passes like that, I'm reminded of something you and I talked about yesterday. Big Ben was a wide receiver the first three years of high school, sitting behind the coach's son, and then he finally got that opportunity. I think he's made the most of it. It's always the coach's son, isn't it? But you know where it helps him? When he looks downfield, he knows what the receivers are going to do. He actually has wide receiver's eyes when he's throwing the ball. Two big plays in succession. Not sure this D knows what hit him, but now they got to get ready. It's first and goal. Now Bell. And only about a yard there as he takes it from the nine to the eight. Defensively, pretty good start there with their backs against the wall. That's a win for the stop troops right there. And if I'm them, I get a little bolder now. They won the first battle, keep coming after them, put the pressure on them. Second down, here's Roethlisberger. And that's off the mark, incomplete. He was looking for his big tight end there, Jesse James. And that'll make it third down. And this offense on third down today, they've been okay, two for three thus far. This is third and goal. 
Roethlisberger will throw. This will be caught at about the six. And he's going to take it in for a Steeler touchdown. Le'Veon Bell with his second touchdown in this opening quarter. And the Steelers find a way to stretch their lead. Getting your back involved, what's the importance there in the passing game? Well, oftentimes you can create mismatches because who's going to cover him? And you get him into space, which is where he likes to operate with the ball in his hands. Oftentimes makes people miss, gets that run after the catch, and off he goes. And into the end zone. Boswell for the extra point. And this one's right through to make it a 14-3 ball game. So the drive goes 75 yards, 10 plays. And it ends with a Pittsburgh touchdown. Boswell on now to kick this one away. That'll be taken in the end zone. And he'll wind up about four yards shy of where he would have been if he had taken a knee as they'll start at the 21-yard line. Out comes the Jaguar offense now as they get set to take over. And on the last go-around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means you're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency, move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. They'll start out on the ground. It's Leonard Fournette. And he got blown up on that play. Back at the 20. It's a loss of two there, bringing up second down. Well, that play was doomed right from the start. They just about ran into every defender on that one, didn't he? It felt like everyone got a piece of that tackle. And the offense moving in the wrong direction here now as they face a second and 12. Here we go now. Green, 90. Again, it's Fournette. And he's going to lose yardage here. Back to his own 18. It'll be a loss of a yard, and that'll make it third and 13. Don't forget about finding the lane there. He barely had time to look up before he was planted in the backfield. Probably fortunate he was able to hold on to the football. The Jaguars on third down. Just one for three thus far. This is going to be third and 13. From the gun, it's Bortles. He's going to leave this for his running back. It's complete. And he's going to be brought down on what will be the final play of this first quarter. One quarter in the books. 14-3, that's our score. More from the Steel City coming up after this. The NFL on EA Sports is fueled by Gatorade, the sports fuel company. Alongside the former defensive back Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. It's Jaguar football as we begin quarter number two. They are, however, facing a fourth down situation.
Here's Brad Nordman now. On for his second punt. He'd take a repeat of his first. With it is Brown. He spins free. Brown with a stick skills. 21 yards. Well done on the return. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. And we put our focus now on Le'Veon Bell. He's in his own second quarter, already closing in on a 100-yard game. And that's the magic number for a running back. Anytime you get to that triple digits, that's all you're looking for. But he's got a chance to really exceed that in this one. Yeah, he does. That, that's been the gold standard for a long time, hasn't it, that 100-yard mark? It really has. And that never has to shift because it's in a game. It's a thousand yard mark. I'm wondering since we've gone from 12 to 14 to 16 games, maybe we need to up that a little. They go play action here on first down. This is caught by Antonio Brown. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. That one good for 14 yards and a Steeler first. And connection number one there on the game, Roethlisberger to Boney Tony. Antonio Brown, that's what his high school teammates used to call it. I wonder what they would call him now. A bit <laughs> more muscular, more successful Boney Tony Brown, right? <laughs> I'd say you're probably right. It may be all of that. I'll still call him Boney Tony, but Ben Roethlisberger calls him my number one target. On first and ten, it's Roethlisberger. He'll find Juju Smith-Schuster. And he'll get it down on the play to the 37. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. Second down, Roethlisberger over the middle, and it's incomplete. And the Steelers on third down. They've been good, three for four thus far. This time it's third and three. To throw again is Roethlisberger. And he couldn't hang on to it through the contact. Incomplete. That's very well timed there defensively because it's not a bad throw, but the collision came at the exact time he was reaching to bring in the football. Really, really well done. Decent offense, just better defense. I think you're right. Now Chris Boswell for the Steelers' field goal try. This from 54 yards away. and more than a foot or so wide to the left. And this score will stay right where it is. Well, this winds up an empty possession. Everything looked okay. He just never got the ball on target. And knowing him, he'll be disappointed with that effort. The Jags and Leonard Fournette making their way onto the field. They've given him some touches. They haven't had a lot of success on the ground. Do you maybe keep going to that well, or do you mix it up more? I think you mix it up more, try to loosen things up. Get the defense to react to other people, other plays, but don't forget about it. That's your horse. You know, Secretariat lost twice in his career. <laughs> so educational. That's very true, kids. Look it up. So after the missed long field goal attempt, this offense set up nicely at the 44-yard line. Go now. On play action, it's Bortles. And he takes this one down all the way near the 30. That one goes for 24 yards.
snap comes at one, and it's Bortles. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. Bud Dupree not dropping into coverage. He comes on the blitz and takes him down for a loss of nine. Man, he got in there so quickly, Charles. What could the offense have done to adjust and account for that? But what you're hoping is that you figure out and you see and get a clue that maybe there's going to be some pressure coming at you. And you change the blocking schemes. Maybe you go to max protection. The biggest ones, maybe you bring your running back in to try and keep you clean. But in that case, that didn't happen. Zero accountability and a sack resulted. On second down, here's Bortles. Toward the center of the field, but it's incomplete. The veteran tight end, Mercedes Lewis, the intended receiver, and it's third down. The Jaguars on third down. They've only converted once in four tries. This will be third and 19. And now whistles and a flag, and I think we got to jump here. Neutral zone infraction, defense. Jumpy on the right side of the line. Sometimes when you're on the end, a little bit farther away from the ball, any type of movement will get you to jump, and that's exactly what happened there. Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage, look defensively. Three, 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 three. On third and long, it's Bortles. And some space here. And he gets this one all the way down inside the 15, just shy of the 10. And they pick up 25 as they convert on third. Second down now after the incompletion. Three, three, 90, three, 90. Working from the gun, it's Bortles. And he's brought down. It's a 10-yard gain there, and it sets him up now first and goal. Shotgun now for Bortles. And incomplete, he dropped it in the end zone. Down this close to the goal line, first down. Surprised that wasn't a run? I am, and you know I'm old school. I want to run the ball on first down in this situation because second down, that gives me an option of running play action and maybe throwing it. Yes. 
Second and goal to go now. They'll try to punch it in with Fournette. And he'll take this into the end zone. Touchdown, Jacksonville. A great effort there. Taking it in. And the Jaguars are back within a score. I know we don't talk about it enough, but the intelligence level of the guys up front blocking, the offensive linemen, maybe the smartest guys in football overall. Add in a little bit of athleticism and a whole lot of toughness, you've got a lot to deal with, don't you? That's why the guys in the backfield get them really nice Christmas gifts, right? If they're smart, they do. So that drive in total eight plays, and it results in a touchdown for Jacksonville. Here's Lambeau out to kick this one away. This is fielded at the goal line. And he'll take this across the 25, a couple extra yards up to the 27-yard line. Now let's discuss Antonio Brown as he heads back out there now second quarter here he has only one catch but they have the lead you got to think there's going to be more involved at some point that's what you would expect but sometimes what defenses do to take away a player of his magnitude it costs them in other areas and right now with them losing they may have to change their focus and maybe he will open up a little bit more as the game goes on yeah well so far just the single catch Play fake here on first down. And that's complete to Jesse James. And they're going to get this one all the way out across the 45. A good pick up there of 20 yards. Nice play call. A little bit of play action right there. If you can get those linebackers to freeze for just a split second, that's usually all the room you need in order to get it to your tight end. First down with Roethlisberger. Throwing middle, but it's incomplete. Well, Charles, we've talked about controversial rules a lot this year, but in that Cowboys-Raiders game, Derek Carr going in to try to win the game, fumbled through the end zone. Of course, that's a touchback. The other team gets it. Is that a rule that you like? What do you think? Um, listen, I'm actually for the rule staying as it is. And for Derek Carr, the unfortunate part was... When he fumbled the football, right, Pylon is the... Le'Veon Bell, kiss him goodbye, and into the end zone, touchdown, Pittsburgh. Le'Veon Bell on his way to a monster game, three first-half touchdowns, and the Steelers are going to add on to their lead. He's got the hat trick, three touchdowns now. Did you throw yours? Did you throw yours? I, I didn't there? have mine. You've got yours. You've got one of those Abe Lincoln hats. Yeah, and that stove pipe is going right out there for him. A nose for the end zone, third time today. I think he deserves a tip of the cap. Extra point now by Boswell. It's good, and it's 21-10. Scoring summary, three-play drive, and it ends with a Le'Veon Bell touchdown run.
Boswell on now to kick this one away. Fielded about a yard deep. And he'll get this just up past the 20, but a marker is down. Let's get the call. Holding the seating team. Well, that holding call set him up with not great field position. Not at all when you tack on the penalty. With that field position after the return wasn't terrific, it's not a great starting field position as well. and 10. Here's Bortles. Looking long for Westbrook. And it's knocked away and incomplete. D.D. Westbrook is intended receiver. And now it's second down. They decide to air it out a little bit on that play. Take a shot downfield, but the coverage was really nice. Able to get a hand in and tip it away. Second down, here's Fournette. And he takes us across the 15 to the 17. They get six here after the incompletion, and it'll leave them with a third and four. Frustrating for a defense, energizing for an offense. Finding a way to create that type of yardage in your running game, that'll make the guys carrying the ball very, very happy. The Jaguars on third down. Two for five to this point. This is third and four. Blue 45. Blue 45. Bortles. Gets it here to right around the 24 before he's out of bounds. Bortles on the hook up to Hearns for the Jaguar first down. And that's how you pick up a first down. Not only does he make the catch, but has enough body control to get his feet down inbounds, toe tapping and dragging to make sure he gets it done. able to plow forward up to about the 29 just shy of the 30 five yards on the carry good pickup on first down and there's a run to be happy with good solid yardage he'll take that anytime he hand the ball to a back now Bortles throwing on second down Quick hitter here, it's complete. And he'll be brought down right around the 37. Eight yards on the pick up there, and it moves the sticks. When you execute a drag or a crossing route really well and give them a chance to let it develop a little bit, you can gain some significant yardage hitting your tight end on that one. A give to Fournette. And he's got it up over the 40 to the 41. It's a pickup of four, and it'll bring up second down. It's Chris Ivory. And not much there at all. Maybe a yard up to the 43. Partner, we know today's NFL is really built around the guy throwing the football. But these short runs, they still pay dividends because they can take their toll on a defense and they can add up as the game goes along. You control the clock, you control the ball, and that way you often control the game. Now whistles here, and I believe one of the Jaguar linemen might have moved. Ball start, offense. 
Not easy being a rookie left tackle in this league, and there they got him for the penalty. Not easy at all. Think about what you're dealing with every game you play. Ostensibly, the best pass rusher is over you on every snap. I'd be a little jumpy myself. The Jaguars on third down. They've hit at 50%, three of six to this point. This is third and 10. Here's Bortles to throw. And the Steeler pressure too much here. He's going to go down. I'm starting to feel for that quarterback back there. I mean, you know me. Normally, don't have a lot of empathy for the QB, right? In this case, definitely. He's been on constant duress this entire game. I don't know how he's surviving back there. And to think, there's still a long way to go in this football game. Here's Brad Nortman now as he's on to punt for Jacksonville. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. This is taken at the 18. That'll be put in the books as a 53-yard punt. And possession will switch hands first and 10. Here comes Ben Roethlisberger and the Steeler offense back onto the field. They've sort of epitomized balance. I mean, he's thrown the ball pretty well. They've run the ball well. Got to be pretty happy over on that sideline. Takes a lot of pressure off, doesn't it? As much as those guys back there want to throw the ball around and be the focal point, when you're able to run it well and hold the defense back from their pass rush, it allows you to throw it as well as we're seeing so far in this game. Yeah, now they'll be looking to add to their lead here in the second quarter. On first down, it's Roethlisberger. Over the middle, complete. That's James. And he'll be brought down right at the 30 here. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. They gave up the completion there, but this is what zone defenses count on. Catching the ball and not much run after the catch. Roethlisberger to throw on second down. And he'll be brought down shy of the 40 at the 38-yard line. It goes as a gain of eight and it moves the chains. down carry by Bell and he's across the 43 extra yards to the 43 it's a six yard gain on the ground and that'll make it second and four let's talk a little football 101 here because one of the keys to advancing the ball downfield success on first down huge difference as we know between second and four and second and eight and nine On second down, it's Bell. And he will make his way back to where he started from, and that's all, as we will make our way to the two-minute warning. They'll say no gain on the play there, and now it'll be third down. A reminder that when halftime rolls around, Larry Ridley will have all the highlights and analysis of this first half of play from our studios in Orlando. And the Steelers on third down. They've converted three out of five thus far. This will be third and five. Gone. It's Roethlisberger. And James has it. 
Roethlisberger to his big target, James. All 6'7 of him for a Steeler first down. And a good quarterback facing zone coverage. If he has just a little bit of time to survey the scene, that's what's going to happen. No doubt about it. If there's no pressure, he's going to continue to pick them apart because he'll have all that time to find someone open downfield. He can only cover for so long. So maybe they want to go to a zone blitz scheme, get a little bit more pressure. Remember when Carolina did that against Denver? They lost the game ultimately. They dropped the defensive end out, and he ended up with an interception in that game in Super Bowl 50. Maybe some sort of scheme like that to try and get more pressure at the passer. Wiggles free. And he's brought down. 12 yards that time at a Pittsburgh first. will come with a little under a minute to go in this first half. So we're back in the offense getting set following the call of that timeout. So the defense has put them in a tough spot. It's second and long. From the gun, it's Roethlisberger. Got his man complete over the middle. That's James. And before they can run this third down play, we're going to get a timeout. As they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half. So the offensive unit called the T.O., and now we are ready to resume play. Steelers on third down. They've converted four times out of six. Not bad. This is third and seven. From the shotgun, it's Roethlisberger. And some room to maneuver. And he'll work it inside the 30 to the 29-yard line. Chris Boswell for the Steelers field goal try. From the right hash, it's a 46-yard attempt. And his kick is absolutely perfect. And that will get the lead up to 14. So a good kick that time, and he's able to redeem himself from the previous miss. And fortunately for him, he got the chance to do that not long after missing the first time. Sometimes a whole game goes by, and you don't get that chance at all. So you keep it with you till the next time you take the field. Yeah, 
after the successful field goal try. Here's Boswell to send it away. That's fielded in the end zone. And the decision to bring it out will cost him about five yards as he'll get this only back to the 20. Here comes the Jaguars offense as they get set here. And you know, their previous possession, they were able to move the football, but still wound up punting in the end. You know, in 2016, Carolina had a 20-play drive mm, yeah. that lasted over 10 minutes. And remember how it ended? In a punt. Yeah, I mean, how does that happen? You just don't see that happen every day. And this one maybe not quite that bad, but still, you'd like to have a chance for points if you hold the football that long. Agreed. now on first down. He'll set up the screen to Fournette. And he'll get to the 29-yard line brought down there. Now whistles come in. We're going to get a timeout here by the offense. As they'll stop it with a little over 30 seconds to go in the first half of play. So the offense took the timeout. Looks like they're ready to go as we get set to resume the action. So they complete the pass, and now they face a second down. They'll run it now out of the gun, and they'll take him down at the 31-yard line. And now we won't see a play on first down. We're going to get a timeout instead, as they'll stop it with 27 seconds remaining here in the second quarter. And we're back. The offense had a chance to talk things over, and we'll see what they come up with here on this next play. Offense comes to the line now, first and ten. Now Bortles. He'll check this one off to Fournette. Now before the second down play, we'll get whistles and a timeout as the clock will stop with 20 seconds to go in the first half. And welcome back, the offensive unit. They took the timeout, and now they get set to line up as we resume action. Second down, and this is caught. Mercedes Lewis with a grab. Seven yards there, good enough to move the sticks. Clock running as Bortles hurries to try to get his guys set. Bortles now on first down. And it pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. That would have been a great catch, but it's real difficult to hold on to it because it was contested all the way. Would have been a great play if he'd been able to haul that one in. And unless this is a quick incompletion, this is likely the last play here of this first half. Here we go now. Three, 90. A final shot before half for Bortles. It's caught right side, it turns. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. Okay, Brandon, thanks, and welcome everyone to our EA Sports Halftime Report. Let's get to the highlights. The Steelers are happy to be in front, and they'll look to play another solid half of football. The Jaguars know it's always hard to come in and get a win on the road, but they're not out of this one yet. All right, let's take a look at some of the highlights from the first half. 
Steelers taking the field for their opening drive. Bell's going to take it off the right side, but a quick three-play drive ends with the score. Steelers line up at the eight as they get out to a 7-0 lead. Bell's wide open, able to make the grab, and he kept off the long drive with a touchdown. The lead now at 11. Jaguars have it early in the second. The run will go outside to the left here. He caps off the second play drive with the score, closing the gap to four. About halfway through the second, Bell's got nothing but space here. He'll score his third touchdown of the half. Okay, Larry, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. So both teams have their marching orders and we'll get going again here in quarter number three. That'll be taken in the end zone. And he'll take it back to about the 19-yard line. Out come the Jaguars now as they'll go on offense first here in this third quarter. They have the ball here for the inaugural drive of the second half. Pretty big deficit, though. We'll see what adjustments were made in that locker room. And I never want to make something more important than it actually is, right? I don't want to create more hype than what is there. But, but this is a do that? I'm doing it, though. <laughs> this is a really important drive. And we often talk about teams scripting plays to start a game. A lot of them script to start the second half, too. And they're scripting something that they expect to get them into the end zone and back into this game. We'll see if that script is a good one for them. They go play action here on first down. And his throw is incomplete. Tommy Bohannon, the fullback, is intended target. And that'll bring up second down. Hey, partner, I want to sidestep for a second. Week 15, Raiders-Cowboys. I know you saw that crazy <laughs> first down measurement. Very, very controversial. Look, it didn't pass the eye test. And what I mean by that is when they put the ball down and brought the chains out, you couldn't just look at it and say, first down or not. Ball's, you know, the nose of the ball was over. I mean, you had everyone eyeing it, looking at it. It's about making sure the posts are, are, are directly at 90 degrees. Do you need a leveler out there? I mean, everything was going on in the discussion. And finally, Gene Steratore, the referee, pulls an index card out of his back pocket to slide it between the football and the marker and signals first down. Now, we haven't seen that since, what, Bill Vinovich? Yeah. Was that 2013? 2013. It's not an everyday occurrence, no. but you do what you have to do to get the job done. So, anyone wants to put a computer chip in the football, it's a great time to bring that idea back. I think Jack Del Rio might want to put a chip <laughs> in the football. No doubt. The Jaguars on third down. Three for seven so far in this game. This is third oh, down and 12. Oh, From the gun, it's Bortles. Steeler pressure too much here. He's going down. T.J. Watt in there to drop him for a six-yard loss, and that'll lead to a fourth down. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line flat out cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. Here's Brad Nordman now. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. Brown with a stick skills. It's a 49-yard punt, but subtract nine there for the return. Now we take a glance at the offense as they work their way back out for their first possession of the second half. This is sort of what you would call a put-away drive. Is it, they score here, especially a touchdown, it's almost out of reach. It certainly feels that way, and I think that they're going to call their plays accordingly because 
What you really want to do, even though you know the scoreboard is still up there and the game's going to go on, the fact you can take the spirit away from another team. Their drive and will to come back and win can be taken with another score right here. It's still third quarter, but you just get that feel. Yeah, they're teetering right there on the brink, aren't they? Throwing Jones. Looking left side, and he's got a man. It's James. And he goes out of bounds. It looks like right at the 50. The completion good for three, and it's second down. Let's make this one simple. What a catch, especially the finishing part of getting his feet in bounds, toe tapping, and of course, foot dragging. A little tapestry, if you will. Oh, I like it. From the midfield strike, they'll look to throw. Able to get away. Toward the right sideline, but it's incomplete. The Steelers on third down. They've hit four of seven. This is third and seven. Operating from the gun, Jones over the middle, hauled in by Smith-Schuster. And he'll be brought down at the 45-yard line. Just a five-yard pickup, and it leads to fourth down. Whether you're playing West Coast offense or not, one of the maxims of the West Coast offense is you're either throwing a touchdown or a check down. In other words, look for the big shot, but be smart. And I think they did exactly that on that play. They didn't get the first down, but they're taking care of the ball well. Yeah, and being rightly cautious with that lead here in the second half. And look at this. He's going to keep it. He's just going to dump this one off to his fullback out of the backfield. A little trickeration there, but it doesn't fool this defense. Anytime a fake doesn't work, we usually focus our attention on the guys that were unsuccessful. But how about the defensive guys? They have to plan all week. They have to prepare all week. Special teams, they look like they were educated for that one. Educated on their toes and getting a big stop. And out now comes Jacksonville as they get ready to go. And they're coming off a three and out, my friend. I think they've got to look at that play sheet and go to a spot that they haven't gone before. Time to shake things up a little bit to try and get this offense moving. Okay, so how do you do that? How do you shake things up? You look at what you've called before, realize it hasn't worked <laughs> Go to so something well, else. And maybe you try and find one of those special plays from one of your better players, and maybe try and hit something big and get things going in the excitement area. Trying to get the run game going. This is Fournette. That is not going to be any help as they dump it behind the line of scrimmage. Call that a loss of five yards on the play. And it'll be a second and long. But these guys are going to chop into that deficit. They got to do a much better job in the run game. Caught behind the line of scrimmage. No yardage will be found. Looks like the defense in press coverage here. On second down, here's Bortles. Now they go screen. It's complete. And he is leveled. Knocked down hard. Give him five on the screen play, and that'll set up a third down. The Jaguars on third down. They've converted three times and eight chances. This is third and ten. Working from the gun, it's Bortles. He's got the hookup to Lee. And he takes this one down all the way near the 30. It's a gain of 20 and picking up the first. It's lining up first and ten. A handoff, Fournette running left. And he 
he's going to get this one down to the 30. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. This is what happens sometimes when you abandon the running game. It's hard to get back to it because once guys get out of that mentality of firing out and hitting people, hard to get them started again occasionally. Bortles going to throw. Completes it to Hearns. That one good for the completion percentage, but no gain. It'll be third down. Well, the stats that matter on this play don't help a team very much, unless, of course, you're playing defense. If you're getting points per reception, you got a reception, but yeah. no yardage. Great job by the defense, though. They, they read through that one. They read through it, gave up no yardage, and people got credit for tackles. Pretty good deal. But 22 is the line to gain here on third down. Shotgun now for Bortles. A dump off for Ivory. And he's able to get it down to the 25-yard line. Give him six on the play, and that'll bring up fourth down. So much about offense is what you call hidden yardage. You know, you, you throw the ball to someone, they catch it, and then they can make a big play. You know, they create a play, run after catch. They did a really nice job there of limiting that and keeping them from a first down. Now stopped him in his tracks. And Lambeau will put this one through. And high fives for that one as that drive ends in three. So it's a seven-play drive, but it stalls out in the end. Let's credit the defensive front seven. They were a little leaky at the start of the drive, but they stiffened toward the end. Now after the main field goal, back out Lambeau to kick this one off. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And heavy contact. He is knocked down hard. And Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. They had that first half lead, but they have been shut down here in this third quarter. So time to retool a bit and probably need to tap into that emotional vein that gets them back to really playing hard and effectively. Because a lot of times we think it's just play calls and this isn't working and they're shutting them down. Sometimes when you get a lead, you lose your edge. You don't play quite as hard. That's what they're looking for here. Try to get that edge back as they've watched this lead shrink a little. Now Jones. On first down, throwing it a traffic there, and that's complete. And this one will go to the 28-yard line. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. Completed pass play. Now let's see if they go back to the air or to the ground. On the counter, here's Bell. And an alley to run. Le'Veon Bell, it's a foot race. 20, 10, and into the end zone. Touchdown, Pittsburgh. Le'Veon Bell, 72 yards. And the Steelers find a way to stretch their lead. Still plenty of time left in the game, but now starting to pull away a little bit. Get some breathing room with that one. And I don't want people to think that NFL locker rooms are cookie cutter, that everyone's saying the exact same thing in every situation. But I do know that all 32 teams have an emphasis on starting fast. Game, being on second half, no matter what, whether it's first five minutes, first three, whatever, this was a big score to start the second half. 
Boswell for the extra point. And the lead is up to 18 now. It only took him two plays there to find the end zone. The last one, the long run, getting him in for six points. Boswell on now to kick this one away. This is taken about seven yards deep. And the decision to bring it out is going to cost him about seven yards, all told, as he's taken down back shy of the 20. And out now comes Jacksonville as they get ready to go. And tough to win games if you're going field goal, field goal, field goal here. They got field goal last time. Now they'll be looking for a touchdown. They're looking for the big chunk now because, as you noted, the field goal, field goal, field goal way of doing it makes it that much harder and puts more pressure on every possession for you now. Go ahead and get six and feel a lot more comfortable about the position they're in. Bigger chunks. We'll see if they can get the score. They begin with a run by Fournette. And he'll get across the 20, but only to about the 22-yard line. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. I think they want to start getting back into this game. It behooves them to get better on first down. Yeah, certainly not what they were looking for there out of the opening play of this drive. And after the play on the ground, that brings up second down here. Run it again with Fournette. And he'll get to the 29-yard line brought down there. It's a seven-yard gain there, and it's good enough to move the chains. We use the word relentless a lot with guys who are aggressive on the field. In this case, it really fits, doesn't it? How about his ability to break tackles and his feet never stop moving? So the offense has it first and 10. They'll run it now out of the gun. Not much room here as he only gets it to about the 30. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. That was a really nice play, be able to stack that one up. When they get back in the huddle, he's got to, he's got to tell his guys up front, great job. They kept people off of him, allowed him to run free and make the hit on the runner. And filled the gap nicely, kept him to just a one-yard gain. Now they'll throw it. Bortles. That one complete to D.D. Westbrook. And he'll be brought down shy of the 40 at the 38-yard line. And they'll get nine there as that sets him up better for third down. The offense on third down tonight, they're right at about the league average, 40%, 4 for 10. They're looking at third in the nose of the football. They'll try and run for it with Fournette. And he will have a first down here at about the 40. Officially a gain of just a yard there, but they do convert on third and inches. Brandon, what were they thinking on defense there? That looked like they were playing for the pass. That was third and short. Yeah, it was an easy pickup because they handed it to him. That was way too easy. Just looked like absolute confusion defensively. Not sure why they were in that set. Yeah, I'd say you ought to have a few men in the box there. Snap comes at one, and it's Bortles. And it's a short one here, complete to the tight end. Give him a couple on the catch at second and eight. 
I do have to admit, I like it when it all comes together. When the top part, catching the football, right, whether you're catching it with your hands or cradling it, comes together with the legs, in this case, the feet, did a little toe tap to stay in bounds and complete the catch. And a great job by our crew on the camera shot. Love when you see the grass or on the field turf, those rubber pellets flying up. Great catch. Throwing now is Bortles. And complete to Lewis over the middle. Ten yards there, good enough for a Jags first down. Like so many tight ends nowadays, they have no problem at all putting him in the slot and letting him go to work, and that's a nice pitch and catch right there for a first down. Fresh set of downs here, and on the outside, they're playing press coverage. On first down, Bortles. A throw left side complete to his receiver, Westbrook. A gain of six there on first. Second down now after the pass completion. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest game. They give him about four on the play, but he's marked short, so it'll be third and about the length of the football. Pretty good job defensively. Thought he was going to get it, but they knew where that marker was, and they stopped him just short of it. What it does is emphasize that strategic football and situational football is not just played on the offensive side, is it? Defense understanding, as you noted, where the first down marker was and making sure they didn't get there. Here's Bortles to throw. Blitz coming, and down he goes. T.J. Watt in there to drop him for a six-yard loss, and that'll lead to a fourth down. Brandon, I think you understand the type of afternoon this offensive line is having. It is a long one for them. Long for you to spend it with me. Long for them trying to block those guys. They've given up a whole lot of sacks, and the speed and quickness that defensive line is eating them alive. Here's Brad Nordman now. He's been terrific so far. He gets it away, and I think they'll smartly play keep away here from Brown. And this one's out of bounds. Should be inside the 10, I think it is, at the six-yard line. And Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. And for them, a touchdown their last go-around. Obviously, they'll be hoping to do that again. And when you start plotting for this drive, when you start thinking to yourself, okay, what are we going to do? You don't go away from what you did before because that worked, but you have to be prepared for wrinkles and counters because you know they'll make some adjustments. Very tough spot here for the offense to start. The give is to Bell. And shedding the tackle, and now some room. And he's brought down, but not before they get it across the 20-yard line. The Steelers picking up 15 yards there in a first down. It's funny, partner. Le'Veon Bell, when he came out of Michigan State, when I go back and look at my analysis of him and what my grades were for him, I thought he was a big-time player, great potential but I didn't know we were going to get this player. I was used to a big, solid, thick running back, but now I've got a full package, a guy who can do everything, as we just saw there, including breaking tackles. But at the time, second round pick in 2013, some people probably wishing they'd taken him in the first. And that is gonna do it for this third quarter of action. We'll return with more after this. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. Back now in Pittsburgh. It's Steeler football, and they have the lead as well as we begin quarter number four.
So the run gets them the first, and now they operate with a fresh set of downs. Let's go. Over, over, over. And they'll keep it on the ground with Bell. And some room to work. And he's brought down, getting this one up to about the 35. It's a Pittsburgh first down, a gain of 13. I think this defense tired of seeing him run the football on this D-line probably getting sick of the O-line as well. And as I'm watching this, I'm thinking about a conversation I had with Adam Gase, the head coach of the Miami Dolphins in the offseason. He told me that he asked his running backs each week for their favorite runs. Give me your three top runs. And right now, you're seeing a guy that's probably using his top runs to great advantage in this game. He is in a zone. A give to Bell. And he'll get this one up to about the 39 here. Yeah, give him four yards there. It'll be second and six. I like a guy who understands the situation. I also like a guy who, who you look at him and you say, that looks like a guy who knows the coach is going to say, guess what? You drop this one, you'll be carrying around the training facility for an entire week. <laughs> Maybe flashback to high school or college, carrying it around <laughs> campus, right? Maybe the old gauntlet drill, right? Anyone get the ball out while he's, while he's sitting in class and bring it back to the coach? He's in big trouble. This is Bell, and maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. They'll wind up losing three yards here, and that's going to bring up a third down. On this day, the ground has been his, but at least on that individual play, we just saw the defense finally with a win. Yeah, they finally got one, and that's a win for them, but all game long. He's seen the holes, and they've been huge for him. Kind of like a baseball hitter in the zone. The ball seems bigger. And he's just whacking it. These guys, they've got it going today. All right, here we go. Green, 39. Here's a former 1,000-yard rusher at Steven Ridley. Call it a gain of five. Fourth down now. Here's Jordan Berry now. On presumably to punt, though he did complete a pass earlier. And he'll get this away into the icy winter air. And this one hits at the one, continues on into the end zone for a touchback. And out now comes Jacksonville as they get ready to go. And with this deficit, you can't have too many more drives like the last drive where you had to punt it away. You know what I would tell my offense right here? The punter doesn't exist, guys. He doesn't even exist. He's, He's not a team anymore. I just cut him, <laughs> all right? So you've got to go out and create some offense for us here and give us some points. No way does that guy get on the field on this oh, drive. Poor punter. Yeah, he, it, it wasn't his fault. But so, <laughs> Hey, listen, there's, some, there's got to be casualties at times. We're trying to win a game. Throwing on first down is Bortles. That's into the hands of Westbrook over the middle. And he'll be brought down somewhat awkwardly here and a late flag as well. I think this one's going to be a face mask. Face mask. Defense. So they'll take the yardage and tack on 15 more for the face mask. Talk about a play that absolutely costs you in the end. Just trying to do your job, right? Trying to get him on the ground. Next thing you know, they'll march up another 15 against your squad. First and ten, here's Bortles. And that is caught on the right sideline, but out of bounds, says the line judge. The throw took him a little too far in second down. Oh, he caught it. Just couldn't get the feet down. Couldn't get that toe-tap sequence, right? I was ready to call him tippy-toes if that one was completed. So second and ten here.
Bortles now to throw. So he loses three yards there. Now third down. working with a third and 13 still left. Throwing his Bortles. He finds Hearns left side. And he'll get it down to the 47 here. They do get 12, but they'll be marked short. And that leads to a fourth down. A critical one here if they're going to have any shot at this thing. So they'll go for it on fourth down. They'll go with a big back for it. Oh, and I think he went backward. He did. Doug Marone can only shake his head. His guys are turned away. And this defense is going to get the football back near midfield right at the 48. So he needed the short yard as Charles he elected to try to bounce it outside of the outer third unsuccessful. Sometimes those plays are stacked up by the defense and there's nowhere to go, so you have to bounce it outside. And some backs just get impatient. They want to go to where they think there's more open territory instead of going where the play was actually blocked. In any case, it didn't work here. Roethlisberger going to hand to Bell. Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. Brand is all about pace and tempo now for them. They've got the advantage, so I'm going to put musical terms for you. You don't want to go prestissimo. That's too quick, too lively, right? But you also don't want to slow it down too much. You don't want to go lento. What you really want to be is moderato. Uh, nice and even, uh, nice and steady, get those gains, and close out the game. I think that chicken parm from last night's gone to your head. <laughs> he had a great strong move, but he'll still be stopped shy of midfield. Only a yard on the pick up there, so it leaves him needing a conversion here on third and a tough nine. I like that run right there, partner. Not the flashiest run, not the one that's going to break for big yardage, but he understands the situation. And taking care of the football, paramount, and he got it done. Nursing that slim lead, you're exactly right. Hold on to that ball. On third down, here's Bell. No gain on the play there, and it'll bring up fourth down. But he was stopped on that play, but he's had plenty of carries all afternoon. Every now and then, the defense is going to win one, but I don't think they'll shy away from handing it to him the rest of the game. Here's Jordan Berry now, as he's on to punt for Pittsburgh. He gets this away. It's a good one, drawing toward the sidelines. This one angles out of bounds in a good spot in the coffin corner. And they're going to mark this out of the five-yard line. And out now comes Jacksonville as they get ready to go. And this offense last time turned it over, went for it on fourth, didn't get it. They're lucky, though, because no points against the team on the board, but we'll see how they respond. Yeah, they've got to get a lot of credit to their defensive teammates, don't they? They had their backs on that last series, and because they did so, that allows the coach to still stay aggressive on offense and maybe go for it again in a similar situation. I was going to say, maybe makes that offense feel good when you know you've got a defense making stands like that. Yeah, that'll loosen up things a little bit, won't it? Maybe you'll play a little bit better the next time you have the ball. Here we go, now. 
Back near his goal line. Here's Bortles. And he's going to go down right near the goal line. The officials look at each other. They're going to mark him at the one-yard line. Bud Dupree in there to pick up his second sack now of the afternoon. So the D gets the sack on first, and now it brings up second down. Here we go. Three, 90. Three, 90. In his own end zone, it's Bortles. In trouble, and the ball's out. It's in the end zone loose. A big loss on the play. That's the bad news, a consolation. They keep the football. And I have to admit, partner, that I've often thought that I don't like this rule, where the offensive player fumbles the ball, goes out of bounds, and they get to keep it. <laughs> that's just because you're a defensive guy. That's why you don't like it. Yeah, you're right. It is a slanted view, isn't it? But that's this is where, for the offensive team, the sideline is their friend. Usually it's not their friend. Yeah, exactly right. I actually played for a guy in college. You know what he used to name the sideline? Sammy. Sammy sideline and use him well. Kick comes after the safety from the 20 as they bring the punter on to try and get some hang time here. And he's got Rome. And Le'Veon Bell making his way back out onto the field now. I guess it kind of goes without saying at this point, but he's had a great game, as we like to say, a nose for the end zone, no doubt. Continues to find it throughout this game, and I'm sure he's got a nice place to live. He might want to make an offer on the end zone for a second home <laughs> because that's what it's been like throughout this contest. He knows how to get there, and boy, he looks happy when he does. He's already bought all the property in the end zone. That's the problem. He's going to sell to himself now. Roethlisberger with a give to Bell. And he'll be tackled just past the 35 at the 36. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. Well, Brandon Pace comes into play now because they've got the advantage. They've got the football, but they've got to be very careful about what speed they're going to play. You know, my, my music teacher back in New Paltz, Mrs. Bythema Bagley, used to say, don't go prestissimo when you really want to go Largo. And what she meant by that is don't go too fast when you really want to go at a nice, slow, deliberate pace. I am speechless. I am without speech. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. A gain of 10, good for a Steeler first down. Oh, that's one to warm the hearts of all those old school football players, isn't it? Tough, hard, gritty run, got behind his pads, bowled over a few people. Look at that one, right up the gut. So up through three quarters, no reason to lighten up now. So they pick up the first down after the run, and now they approach for the fresh set. And the play clock is going to run out here. They're in no hurry to get a playoff. So that one will be accepted. Still first down. So after the mistake by the offense, it cost him five yards. And now first and 15. Black, Black 20, Black, what's that? After the penalty, it's Bell. And he'll push his way up to about the 44 here. He'll get three of those penalty yards back here, leaving him with a second and 12. 
The fourth quarter here, they've got the lead. They want to keep it on the ground. That's what they're doing. Smart football. Keep the clock grinding. Keep it going. But you got to figure now, they're going to see more people stacked up in the line of scrimmage as they try and bleed it out. They run with a former Michigan man. This is Fitzgerald Tucson. And a minimal gain here as he's up to about the 47-yard line. Give him three on the play, and they're going to have a third down. And the Steelers on third down. They're right at about the league average, 40%, four for 10. This is third and nine. They'll run at Steven Ridley. No gain there on the play, and that's going to leave them with a fourth down. One of the things I love about this game is there's a match of wits throughout the game. Who's going to get the advantage? Who's going to catch someone off guard? It's like the offense thought they might catch the defense off balance with that play call, but unfortunately, that didn't work for them. Here's Jordan Berry now, as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. And he gets it away, a directional kick going toward the sideline. They had no return here. Where will they spot it? They say just outside the 20-yard line. And out now comes Jacksonville as they get ready to go. And last time they surrendered the safety, we know they don't want to do that again. That is just one of those oddities in scoring that we get. And it's just so strange to see that go up on the board. And then you got to make sure that that doesn't happen to your team again. They've got to take care of the ball. But boy, it juices up the defense. Oh, without a doubt. That's a great way to score some points. now on first down. Oh, he's got a little daylight. And this one will go to the 28-yard line. Personal foul. Face mask. Defense. So that flag will cost him 15. And it doesn't matter anymore how you get the face mask. Any part of it is going to be 15 yards. now on first down. Caught right side. It's Lewis. And able to break one tackle but then quickly brought down but a nice little gain. Seven yards to pick up on the pitch and catch. You got the big lead defensively. Willing to give them that underneath stuff, right? And this is why you work on your tackling. Tackle them after the catch. Inbounds. Keep the clock running. Just go ahead and bleed the game out that way. So they complete the pass, and now they face a second down. Here we go. Blue 45. Blue 45. Ah. Bortles going to run the draw with Fournette. And good penetration here. He'll get this down only to about the 49-yard line. Give him a yard on the run there, and that's going to set up a third down and two. Tough day. Tough sledding right there, and it's been that way the entire game. Not a whole lot of room to ramble for him. Yeah, you're right. It's been that way all afternoon. Didn't get a whole lot better there. Coming up to the line, and they will need to run another play here before the two-minute warning. Mortals looking to throw on third and two. And incomplete. The contact made the ball roam free and brings up fourth down. Perhaps they overthought this one a little bit. They've been running it real well on this drive, and it was third and short, okay? They decided to throw the football incomplete. Yeah, they might have thought just a little bit too hard about that play selection. Now Bortles, got to have this one. 
Open man is Westbrook complete. And he gets this one all the way down inside the 20-yard line. 30 yards on the pickup there. And it's good enough for a Jacksonville first. So it's Jaguar football here as we welcome you back. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. side to the tight end Lewis and he'll take it down here just shy of the 15 at the 16 yard line the completion good for three and it's second down now Bortles again this will be caught just inside the 10 and all the way down inside the five to the four first down Jacksonville the passing game looking sharp on this drive for the Jags to throw is Bortles it's going to be incomplete. It's been that kind of a day so far throwing the football. It just seems like nothing going right offensively. Yeah, it's a catch that should have been made, pure and simple. And look, everything else that goes into running a good pass route, throw it all out if you don't catch the ball. It's been that kind of game throwing the football so far, nothing going right offensively. Jacksonville touchdown. Blake Bortles taking it in from four yards out. And the Jaguars make some inroads here on that deficit. And that touchdown puts us in a position to have a discussion, doesn't it? Now it'll be a two-score game after the conversion. Yeah, I mean, there's no doubt with a two-score game they're going to have to onside kick it. We'll just see if they've got a miracle up their sleeve. And you wonder what onside kicks they're going to use and in what sequence if they hope to have a chance to win this game. Lambeau on for the extra point. And that will cut this lead down to 13. So that drive goes eight plays, and it results in a four-yard touchdown run. So two scores down, time definitely not an ally, but here comes the onside kick. And this doesn't work. The Steelers recover it. They knew they needed a miracle. They had to have that onside kick. They didn't get it. Well, as we knew, even before they put the, the toe to the leather on that one, their chances of getting that done, slim and none. And I do believe we saw Slim just leave the door, didn't we? We did indeed. I think we're down to none. And Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. Certainly want to avoid what they had to do last possession. That was pump the football because this, this game's starting to tighten up. In a basketball sense, you think about taking a little bit of the air out of the ball, right? Maybe milk some clock, limit the possessions. In this case, they might want to do the same thing but control the game offensively. Put together some first downs, put together a drive, and keep it away from them. And a great spot to start this drive from here. Here's Bell. And able to push his way forward here for a good little game. And now the Jags defense deciding to call a timeout. It's just their first. They've got two more to use here in the final stages.
And now following that timeout, the defense back out onto the field. Second down to the offense in search of six yards. Again, it's Bell. And he'll take this one down to the 36. And now the Jags going to signal for another timeout. That'll leave him with just one remaining in this fourth quarter of play. So the defense had a chance to catch their breath, and now they're back out and ready. need to get it to the 30 for a first. This is third down. From the shotgun, it's Roethlisberger. And James has it. And he's able to pick up the first before he's taken down at the 27. And now we're going to get a timeout here called by the defense. That'll be their third and final stoppage here as we step aside. So a defensive timeout, chance to regather, regroup, and get set as we resume action. And the knee is taken for the Steelers out of the victory formation. Roethlisberger dropping to a knee, and that ought to do it. points of this when you wanted to close your eyes because of all the points that were being put on the scoreboard you're a defensive guy but it was a fun little track meet wasn't it it was and you know the people really enjoyed this game they're the ones that like going to batting practice at the major league baseball <laughs> parks right seeing the 14 to 11 game that sort of deal that's right up their alley with what we saw in this one So that'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our crew. I'm Brandon Gaughan. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. The Steelers are winners as we say so long from Heinz Field. <laughs>